What's up, nerds? So, just finished the second episode for Percy Jackson and the Olympians. And I just have to say, I did like this episode, but I have some concerns. And I'll talk about that at the end when I give you my review of this. But now I want to give you my breakdown and everything. But I just want to say before I get into my breakdown that I do think that they're sticking pretty good to the books, you know. And I, I do like that. So, um, I'm happy about that. All right, so let's get started on this breakdown. Here we go. Percy wakes up in the camp infirmary with Grover on his side. Yeah, so he just wakes up. I like the look of the infirmary so far. It looks pretty cool. Percy meets Mr. D, the camp director, and realizes that Mr. Bruner is Chiron, who is a centaur. I love Jason Manzoukas. Like, I love this man. He makes me laugh. He's so funny. Um, I just, him as Mr. D was the best. I love it when he's all like, so who's my dad? And he's like, I'm your daddy and everything. He's like, go get me some wine. I liked that a lot. The actor that plays Chiron though, I have to say, I do honestly feel like this was miscast. I don't mind the actor. I believe his name is, uh, uh, uh Glenn, Glenn Tur Turman. Uh, something like that. I can't remember. It's Terman. Something Terman. I do think he's he's not a bad actor. I just think it's a misstep for Chiron. Like, I'm just not seeing it. But, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm willing to change my mind at the end of this. So, I mean, it's totally cool. Chiron tells Percy that he will be staying in the Hermes cabin until he is claimed by his father. I do like the, the him just, you know, telling him like, hey, you got to stay in the Hermes cabin because you can't, you know, we don't know who your dad is and everything. In the cabin, Percy meets Luke Castellan. I'll tell you right now, the kid that they cast, uh, Charles uh, Bushnell, Bushnell, uh, he is great as Luke. I really like him a lot. I was worried and everything uh, when I had seen the trailer and stuff, but him in this episode, he did a great job. And I, I mean, I would totally like if you if you read the books, and I don't know if I want to be a spoiler or not. Maybe I will be in the next one, but. You know, Luke, it seems like he's a nice guy, and that comes across, I I want to be his friend, you know, just off this episode. So he's doing a good job in making himself, you know, uh, very, you know, um, a, a friendly. Clarice LaRue messes with Percy, and Luke tells him to earn glory. I have to admit, I don't know the name of the actress that's playing Clarice, but I'm not intimidated by her in any way, shape, or form. Like, I was watching this episode, and she's all like, hey, new guy, you didn't kill the minute, so admit it kind of thing the whole time. And I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not threatened by you. Why should this kid be threatened by you? I mean, like, I feel like I could just Sparta kick you, and then you'd be done. So I'm not really, I don't know. I just feel like Clarice is just not you know, intimidating. And as far as glory goes, I'm all like, that's fine. I don't remember that in the books, but you know, it doesn't even matter. So Percy tries different activities to find out his skill. I did think that this part was very silly. This part where he tries all these different things. It just felt a little too kiddish to me. I mean, it was fine. I wasn't like, you know, watching it. I was just like, this is stupid. I'm out. But I did while watching, like the arrow thing we saw in the trailer, one of the trailers, but I just, the whole time I'm just like, mm, I could have done without this part because I just was like, it just sent, the whole time I'm just like, this is silly. Clarice and her friends try to dip Percy's head in the toilet, but Percy, with his water power, bashes them, destroying the walls. So I did, I did like this part just because it, it was from the books uh, and everything. So, but I did, I, the special effects on that water was cool. So, I mean, I liked it. There, he meets Annabeth Chase, who recruits him in her team of Capture the Flag. The jury's out on Annabeth, and I'm going to say this later, but I, I, my opinion out is out on the actress. But Annabeth-wise, I just... I don't know. I'm not getting the same vibes that I got from the book, but we'll see. I feel like she wasn't in this enough for me to really give a full-blown review of her, 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 her acting chops. Luke tells Percy his backstory on how he and Thalia recruited Annabeth and came towards the camp. Luke and Annabeth made it. So I like that they told this story. I can't remember if in this book they tell about the tree. I wish they would have. Uh, maybe it's Annabeth that tells him about the tree, how, how Thalia um, died and became the tree. I'm very curious to see if they'll show Thalia in this. I don't think that um, they showed her in the first movie. Uh, for Percy Jackson, but I, if they do show Thalia, I am interested to see who they cast because that'll be super fun. Capture the flag begins, and Percy is attacked by Clarice and her friends. He runs, but is chased by them. Percy breaks Clarice's spear. 
So the capture the flag part was fine, but I have to say, like, and I'll say it later, I didn't like that Percy was just this little this little goof and just a total like like dink. Like he was just standing around doing nothing. And I do feel like that's part of Annabeth's fault because she didn't tell him what to do. She's just like, stand here. And I didn't like him just, you know, like, do do do. I'm going to go pee in the forest kind of thing. I wish she would have had a little bit more, you know, urgency about him and a little bit, you know, more, um, you know, always be aware of your surroundings. So, and again, I mean, Percy just comes off like a total, like, like he doesn't know how to even know how to walk. And then he's just a total pussy at this point because I'm just like, I understand you're outnumbered and they're cutting your arm and stuff, but like, while you're running like a total bitch, and I was just like, whatever. But when he did break, he did start his fighting skills. So, I, and I have to talk about that later. But uh, when he when he broke her her spear, and the the actress was all like, "No," I was like, I felt that. So I thought she did a good job, even though I totally think I could take her. The blue team, consisting of Annabeth and Hermes cabins, wins the game. I did feel this part was really weird. Like, they just all show up on the beach. I'm like, uh, I thought they showed up at the river in the book. Like, they like at the, when they started this. So I'm like, why didn't they just, you know, do it in that area? But I was like, whatever, it's fine. Annabeth pushes Percy into the water. And surprisingly, Percy's wounds are healed. Again, Annabeth being all like, sorry, and then pushing him in the water, and then his, his his cuts get healed and everything. That was fine, but I was just like, eh, whatever. Percy is then claimed by Poseidon, the sea god. I did like the Poseidon um, above him, the, the, the trident above him. I thought that was super cool. I was like, oh, nice, and everything. Poseidon's my favorite god, Greek god, so I liked it. Percy moves to his cabin and is told that Zeus accuses him of stealing his master bolt. And if it is not returned in a week by the summer solstice, there will be war. And I did like his cabin. It looks super cool. A lot better than the cabin from the Percy Jackson movies because that cabin looked like crap. And I did, I mean, like, they. I wish they would have gone into a little bit more detail as far as the, the bolt being stolen. But, I mean, maybe they'll we'll get that a little bit later. Like I said, I did like Dionysus being law, like, you will go get it and everything. And then when Grover came in, I thought that that was fine. But I do, um, I'll talk about that when I talk about my review and everything. Percy is given a quest to find the bolt. And that's the end of the episode, you guys. I thought he got the quest from, um... The, uh, oh, what is that prophet lady? This She's all skeletal in the attic and everything. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, gosh. I'll, I'll, I'll remember it after I'm done recording. But overall, I thought the episode was okay. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. And I'll tell you why I'm, my concerns in just a minute. But I do want to talk about some positives. So, first off, the special effects were good. I really liked those a lot in terms of shows-wise. I thought that I thought that the water coming out of the toilet looked good, and I said that before. I also thought that Chiron, I thought his horse, half-horse part was good. I thought they did a good job there. So, I think that the special effects still, still are good for a TV show. You know, I thought that, I, you know, it wasn't, it was, it was just good. It was good. Also, I thought the fighting choreography when uh, Percy Jackson was, uh, you know, fighting, when he stepped up and started fighting Clarice finally, when he did that move, I liked the move where he like spun and he put a shield up and then the spear went like through the shield and that's when he turned the flip and he broke it. I thought that was really good. I liked that for fight choreography and stuff. And then, um, yeah, and I all, but I do have to say uh, that, Acting wise, okay, acting wise, for the most part, everybody did a good job. I love Jason Manzukis, and I really liked that. Uh, 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 oh God, the kid that played a uh, Bushnell, uh, the kid that played uh, Luke. I thought he did a great job in this episode, and I'm, I was, like I said before, I was worried about him when he got cast, and I saw him in the trailer. But now seeing him here, he did a good job. The girl that plays Clarice, I think, did a good job. It's just, like I said before, I'm not intimidated by Clarice. I, I imagined her a lot different, like a big hulking kind of girl. You know, you know what I'm talking about. But this girl, I, I just don't see it. You know, I feel I I honestly feel like I'm like I'm I'm five foot nothing, hundred pounds of nothing, and I feel like I could take her. 
So uh, everybody did good as, as far as acting goes, but I want to talk about acting in terms of the three main characters, all right? So we're going to talk about the first one, and that is our main character, Percy Jackson, played by Walker Scoble. Now, I thought he did a good job here. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, one thing later, but I thought I thought Scoble did a good job, and I like I said in my last review, I think that he was a great choice for Percy Jackson. He does a good job here. I like what he does, and I can't wait to see what he comes up with next in terms of, like, you know, emotion and stuff like that. All right, now I want to talk about Grover, who is played by um, R.N. Simhardy. I think that's how you say him. So Simhardy, I've come to realize, is not a good actor. He's good at his facial expressions, but when it comes to his line delivery, I find it very choppy. I said it in my last review, and I'll say it in this one. I... He it, it looks like he's reading off of a card, a, 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 a script card, like a card that's off screen. And it just comes like it's an SNL skit. I, I do think that it's, his acting is not good or at least his line delivery is bad. Like when he's not when he's not delivering lines, I think he's good. But it's crazy. I did like him meeting with the uh, hooven, hooved council. What are they called? The cloven council, the cloved council. I can't remember what they're called. The forest people. I like that nymph lady. That was like almost like a mother figure to him. I liked that. Uh, I wish we'd have got a little bit more of that, but maybe later, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, overall I, d I do not think that Sim Hardy is a good actor and I'm, I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. You can call me racist later. It's fine. So now I want to talk lastly about Annabeth, who is played by Leah, Leah, Leah Jeffrey, Jeffries. I think Leah is how is her first name. Leah Jeffries. She did okay. I like I said before, the 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 jury's out personally for me. I can't say she's bad, and I can't say she's good. She was just mediocre because she barely had any lines in this movie, and the ones she did have, it was so short that I'm just like. Eh, we'll wait until next. We will wait until they go on their quest when it's just the three of them and it's more interaction between the three of them. But uh, so I don't, I don't have an opinion either way on her. So I'm just gonna say she's in the in the middle of the road as far as that goes. Okay, so I want to talk about my concerns that I might have for this show, and my concern is that the show is tearing down its main male character to prop up the female characters. And I, I I might have seen a little bit of this. In the book, I did not get in the book that Percy Jackson was this clumsy and this much of a total pussy. Like, I thought maybe, you know, I Annabeth is the smartest one out of all of them, but it, she just came across as, like, this cold-hearted sassy bitch, and I'm just like, mm, I'm not interested in that. Annabeth is not like that in the book, and I, you know, Annabeth, even though she's smart and she knows she's the smartest one, she doesn't shove it in your face, and if she does, it doesn't come across as, as, um, you know, rude. And then, like, anyone he, like, tripped over that log, like, I'm all like, you're, you're making it to where your main character can't even walk? I'm like, oh, get the hell out of here if you're gonna start that nonsense. And then they made him a total coward, like, when he's running from Clarice and her friends, I'm all like... I'm all like, total, little, what a little bitch. I don't remember him running in the book. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not there. I'm like 99% sure it's not there. So it just makes me go like, why? You know, why are you, why would you do this to your main character? So we'll see how that goes forward. I just, I'm a little concerned slash worried about it. And I'll see if my, my worries were just, you know, nonsense or if they are, you know, there's some validity to that. But I'm still looking forward to the next episode, uh, you know, next week. I, I hope that I hope that it's good. You know, I can't wait to see, even though I know what happens, I can't wait to see the betrayal. And I I just, yeah, that's 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 what I've got for it. But tell me, what did you guys think about this episode? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What was your favorite part? Who's your favorite character? Who's your favorite Greek god? I mean, I'm a huge, I love Greek mythology and everything. And my favorite is Poseidon. And then, of course, I do like Percy Jackson. He's my favorite character in the books. But but tell me what you guys thought about it. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind if you're new to my channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next Percy Jackson breakdown and review. You guys have a good week. Bye.